Hey there, movie fans. Welcome to the Blues of June 2021. Uh, starting off with a few DVDs. And the first one is The Tin Red Line. This is the 1964 version based on the book by James Jones that was published two years earlier. And uh, we're all familiar with uh, Terrence Malick's uh, adaptation, uh, which is a better film in my opinion. But this is still worth checking out with uh, Keir Dahlia of uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey fame and Jack Warden of um, Problem Child fame. <laughs> of course, he, he did many other films, but my first introduction to this actor was Problem Child. Uh, the next one is Twinkie. Now, this is an unusual Charles Bronson movie with a controversial subject matter. Um, Bronson plays a man in his late 30s and uh, Susan George plays a 15 going on 16 year old schoolgirl, and um, they fall in love with each other and they get married to each other. And what Richard Donner, uh, you know, the director of, of Superman, the Lethal Weapon movies, the Goonies, what he had done is adding, adding some humor to it, you know, which makes it lighthearted. So it can be described as Lolita light, uh, if you will. Um, it's not a bad movie, not bad at all. But the entire time I was thinking, yeah, this is this is wrong, and what makes it even more wrong is that it it really happened. You know, the, the screenwriter uh, Norman Norman Tedious Vane uh, he based his script on his own experiences. He was indeed married to a sixteen-year-old girl, so it's not my kind of Bronson movie. However. This one is my kind of Bronson movie, Drum Beat, although I haven't seen it yet, but it is a western, and I do love my westerns, as you know. I was uh, unfamiliar with this um, with this uh, oh, DVD uh, uh, media book from uh, Germany until my good buddy Jeff, a.k.a. Uh, 101 Bronson, showed it. Uh, in in his in one of his videos, and uh, I decided to uh, to get a copy myself. Here's a uh, Alan Ladd, you know, of uh, shame, fame. Good actor, this one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, check this one out. Drum beat, and I also picked up the Blu-rays of. Farewell Friend and Rider on the Rain, uh, also with Bronson. I'm, I'm, I'm getting more Bronson movies uh, and I'm planning to do a video of my entire Charles Bronson collection. And if all goes well, I will upload that video on November 3 of this year. Because on that day, uh, it will be Bronson's 100th birthday. So... What better way to uh, to celebrate that than to do a video of my you know Bronson collection? And um, yeah, stay tuned for that. I would say. Next is King Kong, Dino De Laurentiis' 1976 remake, which at the time was the most expensive film ever made, and it has the widest theatrical release. Um, it's not the best King Kong movie ever made, but it's the first King Kong movie I have ever seen. So I've always had a, a soft spot for it. And uh, Screen Factory did a great job with this release. You know, they, they even included the uh, extended television cut, which I've never seen before. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, yeah, wonderful, wonderful, absolutely wonderful release, this one. And here's the, uh, the original artwork, which is a bit controversial because of the, you know, the Twin Towers here. But, um, yeah, wonderful release, absolutely is. 
And I also got the notorious sequel, King Kong Lives. Yes, I know it's bad, but it's also a lot of fun. It's, um, it's a guilty pleasure. What can I say? Anyway, there is something good and something bad about this Dutch DVD. Uh, good thing is that it's one of the few that has Dolby Digital 5.1 uh, uh, audio track. Bad thing is it's um, 4x3 full screen and that is the incorrect aspect ratio. It should have been 2 by 39 widescreen, I believe. Uh, but I got it for, for dirt cheap, so I cannot really complain. Uh, I do hope, however, that it's going to be released on Blu-ray someday. And speaking of the 8th wonder of the world, I purchased the 4K Blue of Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, I really enjoyed it. I, I kind of knew that I was going to enjoy it because I enjoyed the previous uh, MonsterVerse movies as well. And um, the fight scenes between you know, the, these two uh, uh, icons are the highlights of the movie. Uh, especially the one in Hong Kong. That was absolutely brilliant. And um, yeah, really enjoyed it. By the way... I have been thinking of doing a video of my King Kong collection. You guys want to see that? You know, let me know below in the uh, comment section uh, if you want to, if you want me to do a video of my King Kong collection. Moving on to the Boston Strangler, uh, I was really surprised by Tony Curtis's uh, performance uh, the first time I saw it. Uh, he doesn't appear in the film until an hour or so, but he left quite an impression. Uh, this is one of the best performances, if not the best performance, of his career. Now, of course, he played serious roles before, like in um, Sweet Smell of Success and uh, Defiant Ones. But I always saw him as a comedic actor. And perhaps that's that's the reason why I uh, was so surprised by him uh, um, as um, as the Boston Strangler. Uh, brilliantly directed by Richard Fleischer, he shot it in a semi-documentary style, which works very well even today. And uh, I, I love how he used split screen. You know the the same technique that Brian De Palma often used in uh, in his films. But um, yeah, this is a uh, this is outstanding film, the Boston Strangler, really good. And speaking of Richard Fleischer, here is the Dawn is Dead, an excellent gangster film with a great cast. And here is um, is a booklet with two wonderful. Essays, uh, one about the director, Richard Fleischer. Well, actually, it's, it's it's more about the crime films that he has directed. You can see them here. The, the Narrow Margin, that's that's a personal favorite of mine. Violent Saturday, that's also a great film. Yeah, definitely an interesting read. And the other essay is about 1970s gangster films. As you can see here. Yeah. This is the late great Robert Foster. Yep. Excellent release and excellent film. The Dawn is Dead. Next is Explorers. Um, you know, I, I still think this is a wonderful movie. It is, however, my least favorite 80s movie where uh, ordinary kids experience extraordinary adventures. You know, uh, the Goonies, the Monster Squad, 
uh, E.T., you know, those kind of movies. And the last 30 minutes or so are silly and, and childish and uh, cartoonesque. But I don't mind it, really. I, I never really mind it. Um, I've always liked Explorers, and, and Joe Dante has always been one of my favorite directors. I um, devoured his movies when I was uh, growing up, you know. Um, Love the music by Jerry Goldsmith, and um, the makeup by um, Rob Bottin is, is fantastic. Um, yeah, here's a, here's a young Ethan Hawke in his first movie, and this was also the first movie of River Phoenix, uh, who left us way too soon. But uh, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Shout put this out on Blu-ray. Here's the original artwork. Kind of like a you know, Spielbergian sort of artwork, you know. I've always I've always remembered this artwork in the uh, the VSS days. But uh, yeah, wonderful wonderful release. Uh, I've been waiting a long long time for this film to get a uh, 1080p treatment, and the fact that Shout put it out is is yeah, it's wonderful. Absolutely is. Explorers. Next is this very nice limited edition of Waterloo, one of the last great spectacle films from the, the, the golden age of, well, I, wa I wanted to say Hollywood, but Hollywood doesn't has nothing really to do with it, actually. This is an um, Italian-Russian co-production, but anyway, um, unfortunately, it became... A, a, a commercial flop and because of that it killed Stanley Kubrick's Napoleon project I did, I, I did a video on that a long time ago uh, I'll, I'll put the link to that video below in the description um, yes yeah, it's, it's a damn shame that Kubrick never made his Napoleon film on the other hand though if he did make it then Barry Lyndon would probably never have been made and that is my favorite Kubrick film so anyway back to Waterloo um, this is a, a, a monumental piece of filmmaking and, and a historically accurate uh, depiction of uh, the Battle of Waterloo with uh, Rod Steiger as, as Napoleon uh, Bonaparte um, Christopher Plummer as the Duke of Wellington. Uh, here is uh, um, Orson Welles as King Louis uh, the 18th. Um, Jack Hawkins as General Picton. Um, yeah, Rod Steiger was not the first choice to play Napoleon. Uh, originally, Dino De Laurentiis wanted um, Richard Burton. To play the uh, you know the legendary French emperor, and also um, Peter Sellers was considered at one point. That would have been interesting. I don't know if we if he could have pulled it off, but that's an interesting uh, casting choice there. Anyway, let's take a, a closer look at this sweet release from the UK. Here is the uh, small poster. With the uh, you know the artwork that is on the um, on the front cover here, and here is this looks very nice. Look at that. That looks very very nice indeed. Yeah, really like that. Nice little poster here, and also got some um, art cards or no, no picture cards I should say. Oh no, no lobby cards. Excuse me, lobby cards. And on the back as well is a Rod Steiger. Yeah, and of course you got the booklet.
Yeah, just this is a, a great, great epic film. And by uh, here, here he is, Dino De Laurentiis, legendary Italian producer, and this is director um, Sergei uh, uh, Bundachuk, uh, who also did um, the mother of all epic films, War and Peace. You know, the, the seven-hour-long epic film. Yeah, very, very nice. And of course, you have the Blu-ray here. With the uh, with the different cover there. Yeah, very very nice release of an epic film, Waterloo. Next is volume six of the Hammer Collection from an Indicator, Night Shadows. It's called, and it also comes with this poster here. A double-sided poster. This is from a nightmare, and on the other side is the Phantom of the Opera. Very nice. Let's take a look, a closer look at this um, wonderful release. Of course, I got the uh, the previous five releases as well, the previous five box sets. So I had to get to this one too. Anyway. It contains a nightmare, and here is the other artwork. Oh, by the way, uh, it looks like it has two discs. It only has one disc, and this counts for every, uh, each and every one of these cases. And the reason of that is, uh, when let me, let me show it to you. This is just a little cardboard. Um, sleeve I can I think you can call it and it on the back here it says you have received the first pressing of this limited edition at the time it was manufactured there was a shortage of single disc cases caused by a lack of raw materials uh, we didn't want you to have to wait to experience the contents of this release so we decided that using this to this case was the best way to avoid delays without having to make any unwelcome adjustments to our usual packaging design. Please rest assured that this case, if you're getting dizzy, I am very sorry about that. Please, uh, where am I? Oh, here it is. Please rest assured that this case should only contain one Blu-ray and there's no need to worry about where a second disc has gone. Well, there you go. And they all have these, these uh, little things, by the way. So it's, it's just a single disc uh, addition in a two disc case. So there you go. Uh, anyway, the next one is the Phantom of the Opera. And here is the other artwork of that. Uh, this is Captain Clegg with uh, Peter Cushing, also known as uh, Night Creatures. Here's the other artwork with the other title. And the shadow of the cat, with uh, Andre Morel, who is a you know, regular Hammer actor. Yeah, very very nice release from uh, Indicator. The Hammer Volume Six box set. And I also got this title from Indicator. Uh, Indicator was having a little sale on their website. And uh, I only grabbed this one, I Monster from uh, Amicus. This is a retelling of the uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde story with uh, Christopher Lee as the uh, protagonist slash antagonist and also with uh, Peter Cushing. Um, it's 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 
not my favorite Jekyll and Hyde movie, but it's it's, it's always a joy to watch you know these two gentlemen, uh, Sir Christopher Lee and, and Peter Cushing. Yeah, I I watched everything with these guys in. And speaking of Sir Christopher Lee, check out this amazing box set from uh, Severin. This is the Eurocrypt of Christopher Lee. And my goodness, this is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. You know, it's it's releases like this that I love being a movie fan and a movie collector. But um, yeah, let's take a look at the contents here of this wonderful set. Um, you know, the, these are all European uh, films that Christopher Lee has made. I believe this is a is this an Italian film? Yeah, Italian Italian horror. The original uncut version of Castle of the Living Dead. It also come with the uh, the soundtrack here. Yeah, very. Also with uh, Donald Sutherland there in in a very early role. Yeah, very nice. Challenge the Devil. This is also Italian. Yeah, also an Italian horror film. And it also got a bonus disc called Relic from the Crypt. And the contents of this disc is on this card here. Yeah, you can pause it and, and read it uh, if you want to. And there's the Blu-ray of the movie. Uh, Crypt of the Vampire. This is um, also Italian. Yeah, most of them are Italian. Uh, this one, however, is from Germany. Sherlock Holmes and the Deadly Necklace. Uh, directed by Terence Fisher. Uh, you know, a, a familiar uh, um, uh, Hammer director. With Christopher Lee as Sherlock Holmes. And this is a... Um, uh, mini mini series is it the mini series? Well, actually, it's it's a TV series for the Polish television. You can see the Polish anthology series hosted by Lee, featuring twenty four remastered episodes on two disc. Theater Macabre. Yeah, yeah. You know, Christopher Lee is is. He's kind of like uh, the crypt keeper of this show. Yeah, this this is great. This is absolutely great. And here we have another German, yeah, another German movie. Uh, the Torture Chamber of Doctor Sadism. Yeah, this is absolutely great. Absolutely great. I love how. how yeah, Severin has, has done this. And of course you got the uh, the booklet here by uh, Jonathan Rigby, who is um, you know, a specialist you know, of uh, European horror and uh, British horror especially, you know. The man knows his classics for sure. This is a great top quality booklet here about uh, Christopher Lee and his uh, in his films. Ooh.
Yeah, this is very nice. Very nice indeed. Here's, here's uh, Lee as a uh, Fu Manchu. And a Rasputin, the mad monk. The man has done so many you know, legendary characters. Dracula, of course, the mummy. He's one of a few actors who has an incredible, impressive uh, uh, resume and, and filmography, you know. Yeah, absolutely great. Absolutely great, this one. R.I.P. Christopher Lee. Yeah, what a magnificent set this is. The Eurocrypt of Christopher Lee. And last but not least, I got a few uh, additions from Arrow Video, starting off with Irazumi, uh, a Japanese period film, uh, also known as The Spider Tattoo. Uh, this is a blind buy, but uh, it, it definitely looks interesting. Um, here's the original artwork there. No, it, it looks, visually it looks quite interesting and um, it was shot entirely in a studio which I absolutely do not mind if you know if it's done right then it's beautiful to look at you know is the go with the spider tattoo yeah I can't wait to check this one out this looks like a I think this is gonna be a good one Yep, yeah. Irazumi. And I also got this great release. This is um, Major Dundee by Sam Peckinpah with Charlton Heston, uh, Richard Harris, uh, um, Warren Oates, uh, Ben Johnson, uh, also with, you know, the regular Pack and Paw actors. Oh, oh here, James uh, Coburn there, uh, Al Q. Jones, and, and you know, really, really good film. This one. Uh, my good buddy Dan, aka Physical Media for Life, did a, a video of that. I'll put the link to that video below so you can see more of this uh, magnificent set from Arrow Video, which contains both the theatrical cut as well as the extended cut of the film yeah very nice very nice but what's even more nice is this one years of lead five classic Italian crime thrillers 1973 1977 man I couldn't believe my eyes when I when uh, you know arrow announced this uh, uh, release this is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I've only seen one film of this one, uh, of this set, and uh, which is um, this one, Highway Racer. I have the uh, the German Blu-ray of this film, and this is a great film, by the way, with uh, Mauricio Merli, without mustache this time. And uh, the other one is uh, Cold 38 Special Squad. I think I'm going to watch this one first of all the other ones that I've ha that I've haven't seen yet. Directed by Massimo Delamano. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to watch this tonight. Um, the other one is No, the case is happily resolved by Vittorio Salerno. And there's an artwork of all the films, you know, the, 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 all the films together, as you can see.
and the other one is uh, Like Rabbit Dogs by Mario Imperoli and here we have another film by Vittorio Salerno Savage 3 yeah this this is great this is absolutely great and of course you got the very nice uh, booklet here And Highway Racer, you know, that's that's a good one. That is absolutely a great film. With some uh, very good uh, car chases here. Yeah. Very, very nice. Arrow has done it again. Yeah. Great. Absolutely great. And that is it for my uh, June update of 2021. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.